So here's a quick overview of participant observation as a research method for A-level sociology. So the first thing about participant observation, this is a method where the researcher will join the group that they're studying and observe their behaviour. There are lots of key concepts linked to participant observation. So some of the key ones we have are the Hawthorne effect, where people change their behaviour because they're being watched. We also see gatekeeper as a key concept, as these are the individuals who gain permission, grant access to a group or an individual that you're trying to study. This is really important, particularly if you're trying to maybe uh, research a kind of hidden or secretive or maybe even criminal group who don't really want to advertise their behaviours. A field diary are the notes taken while conducting research. Going native is a potential problem of participant research where the researcher loses their objectivity, becomes too involved in the group, develops too much of an attachment to the group, and this can lead to bias in their research. Closed settings are often settings that are difficult to access. So schools, hospitals, prisons, these are environments where you cannot just wander in, you can't just get in, you have to find some route to provide access. And ethnography is about the data that's produced. So these methods produce lots of insight, lots of understanding, lots of data on the lives, the experiences and feelings of the individuals. And by living them, by taking part in them, you are conducting an ethnography. So essentially with this, it's like for Steyn, but you, you do it yourself. So you understand by doing. Now, overt participant observation is the first type here. This is where the participants know they're being watched. The researcher is open about their role, their position, or their purpose. Key examples of this would be Venkatesh and Gang Leader for a Day, Barker and Making of the Moonies, and Footwhite, who studied the Street Corner Society. I've put Footwhite in here because he's, he's semi over. He was open to the, the main gang leader, Doc, but the rest of the gang didn't know. So you can kind of switch between over and covert with, with Footwhite. The key strengths of using participant observation as a research method is that you, you gain informed consent. There's no deception, there's no hidden purpose to the research because you're open about your role as a researcher. It allows Verstehen to be built up. You gain empathy on the participants' position, their lives, their behaviours by living and doing them. It's easy to complete a field diary because of the open nature, you can fill in your record of results as you go. It's ethically stronger than covert observations because you're not breaking any rules, you're not deceiving people. And in addition to all these observations, you're getting lots of qualitative data and you're picking up a truer picture of reality. So really, it's quite high in validity. The downsides, though, are that you're more likely to experience the Hawthorne effect. People know that you're watching them and they will change their behaviour. All types of participant observation can be time consuming. So again, this adds the cost, the money, the stress of trying to complete a piece of research. And obviously there is a lack of representativeness and reliability. The sample will be relatively small. The experiences will be quite unique to the situation, so difficult to repeat on a regular basis. Covert participant observation, on the other hand, is where the participants don't know they're being studied. The researcher's role is hidden from the sample. Key examples would be Lord Humphreys and the Tea Room Trade, Patrick and his Glasgow gang, and Griffin with the Black Like Me study. The key strengths of this method is that it's, it's possible to research criminal groups. It requires less experience um, than obviously some other methods, but obviously particularly it's less likely to be experienced on uh, the Hawthorne effect. So this is a role that won't be impacted upon. Uh, it's most appropriate for hidden groups, even groups who don't want to be observed, don't want to advertise their activities. But the downsides can be ethical issues. So deception, the lack of right to draw, the lack of informed consent, as well as potential guilty knowledge. Particularly Patrick found this when he had to commit crimes to maintain his cover. Other problems would be, as I said, the lack of informed consent, the re required skills, acting, how to record data while undercover as well as the personal characteristics of trying to blend in and join the group. So here we have an overview of, of participant observation, the open and the closed, the overt and the covert forms of using it. Thanks for watching and I hope this has helped clarify a little bit about participant observation.